There's 2.4 billion people that have never heard the gospel. I mean, they've never heard one time. I mean, they, don't even, they haven't even had uh, Roman Catholicism or any Catholicism or any Presbyterian or Lutheran or anything. There's 2.4 billion people who've never heard one time, never heard the name of Jesus, know nothing about Jesus. 2.4 billion people. The world is a very big place. And I would say that when we really look at things the way that they, that, that, that they really are, and you look at 7 billion people on the face of the earth, how many people have really encountered the power of the living God? How many people have encountered Jesus? Um, just, before, just before I talk about this, just a little bit, it's going to be just a little bit, and uh, then we're going to pray for you. And then we're going to send you home full of the Holy Ghost Amen. so that you wake up in the morning happy. So you wake up in the morning feeling the goodness of God. Listen, you know, I've discovered this one thing. I've discovered that if we would just simply feel the goodness, feel the love, feel the joy of the Holy Ghost, everything about our life will absolutely change. Our decisions will be right. We'll be able to hook up with the Holy Ghost, be led by the Spirit of truth. We won't be aggravated. We won't be doing things that causes other people hurt and problems. And the Holy Spirit's there to fill us. All we have to do is be willing to recognize him, to acknowledge him, and ask him to come fill us, and he will. But before I get into something that the Lord's laid on my heart, I want to share with you. My dad, some of you may have never heard this, my mother had a tragedy when I was, um, I was five years old, and she had a brain hemorrhage, and she was never supposed to walk out of the hospital room. It was a massive uh, brain hemorrhage. And her, her, her entire brain uh, was filled with blood, and so there would be no way that she would really ever recover from that. And what happened was they were preparing to see if they could do surgery. They didn't think she would make it through the surgery because she was so bad off. And she said, no, 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 no. Oil Roberts is having a, uh, a tent revival meeting. And I've made an appointment with God. And she had one moment of being coherent. And so, hallelujah, praying God. They put her in an ambulance. They said, well, just let her do it. I mean, she's going to die anyways was basically their attitude. They put her in an ambulance. They took her to the Oral Roberts meeting. Oral Roberts walked by her, and he, didn't, he prayed for her, you know, just real quickly, just laid his hands on her, just pray, prayed, just barely prayed, you know, just, you know, you know, it's Jesus doing the work anyway. So I said, would you please pray just a little bit longer over, longer me? No, 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 just, I just, we're just going to touch you. We just, basically, we're just standing here as representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to touch you on his behalf, and the power of God is going to ultimately change everything about your life. And so it did, change everything about her life at that moment. She felt, as it were, two electrical wires being put together. She, she felt a snap in her head. She's completely healed from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And she lived until the Lord took her home just two years ago. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. And, um, and I guarantee, and, 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 and the bottom line of it is, she's, she's, uh, in, she's just rejoicing uh, in, in the place that she's, she lived for. I mean, that was a wonderful thing about my mother. Um, she just she she lived every day to see Jesus. What a great mom to have, huh? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. And so, uh, the Lord wants to touch you. He wants to he wants to do the same miracle work for you. In fact, He wants to ultimately take you to a place to where that you become the the person that He uses to work miracles through. I want you to look at a verse of scripture. We have a very important verse of scripture uh, here in. In Matthew chapter 21. And turning there with me, I believe where I want to look at is uh, verse 47. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll see there's not 47 verses there. It isn't verse 47. It's verse 43. Kind of like verse 47. <laughs> the Lord Jesus said, therefore, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to forgive me. Um, I, I, didn't want to, I didn't want this verse of scripture. I wanted the verse of scripture that said, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached as a witness to all nations in the end shall come. <laughs> And um, so you're going to have to help me find it for just a minute. Word of knowledge didn't work very well on that one. Anybody, anybody want to help me real quickly? 
Anybody know that verse of scripture? Matthew 24, 14. 24, 14. Turn there. Matthew 24, verse 14. Let me hear the leaves of the pages rustling. Matthew 24, verse 14. Jesus says, And this gospel of the kingdom should be preached in the world, for, in all the world, for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Now, I want you to just back up real quickly, and I want you to look at what gospel of the kingdom. And look here in, in Matthew chapter 9. Well, no, let's just back up to Matthew chapter 4. We'll back up to Matthew chapter 4 and look here in verse... Uh, oh, let's look here in verse... 23. And Jesus went about all of Galilee teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom should be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. And he went, and there Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What was he doing? What was he doing? Look at what he was doing. Look at what he was doing. Healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. That's the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus preached. Now, go ahead and look with me now in nine cha cha Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Let's see if the gospel of the kingdom somewhere changes. Maybe it changes somewhere. <laughs> Maybe it changes somewhere. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Okay? This gospel of the kingdom. What gospel of the kingdom? The gospel of the kingdom that Jesus preached. This gospel of the kingdom should be preached to all nations as in all the world as a witness to all nations. Then should the end come. And he went about in their villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Jesus had a unique way of preaching the gospel, didn't he? Huh? Huh? Jesus stood up and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel, to, to proclaim, to preach the gospel to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captive, the open of the prison doors of them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And when we see him doing that, we see him going everywhere, setting the captives free that were in prison to disease and sickness and in prison to the torments of the of the powers of darkness. Now, let's just look. Let's just look here. Now, I want you to understand something because we just read verse 35. We just read verse 35, what Jesus did, right? Now, look at him. He says, now, here in verse 37, he, he looks upon all of the people. And, you know, Dad's, Dad said he's just one little speck and one little spot. Now, think about this. This Jesus, this Jesus, you could say he's just one little speck in one little spot, but he's more than a speck because he's God incarnate in the flesh. He's anointed with the Holy Ghost to go about setting people free from all the powers of the darkness, the powers of darkness from every work of Satan. Now look at this, look at this. Are you with me? Yeah. Listen to me. He looks at all of the people out there because he's healing everyone with sicknesses and diseases. But I'm telling you, I've, I've laid my hands on, on 30,000 people. <laughs> Try to, you just can't get to them. You can't get to them. Uh, we, we were just in Nepal. And I don't, we, we laid our hands maybe on, I don't know, maybe 3,000 people is all we could lay hands on four or five hours have gone by. Huh? So Jesus is one person. He's one person. He's laying hands on all these people. And he's looking over the landscape of humanity just there. But look over the landscape of humanity. And he says, he says the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. He's looking at all of these people. He says here in verse 36, and they're like sheep scattered without a shepherd. And now what does he say? He says, to his disciples, he says, look, the harvest truly is plenteous. There's, look at all these people with all of these needs out here. Look at all these people right now with all these needs. What happens is we try to do it through the arm of flesh and with our own human ability. Then what's worse is we begin to get discouraged. We begin to become overwhelmed. And really, you're going to get very, very little done with such an overwhelming state. Of mind and heart. 
Suddenly, at some point in time, you've got to recognize, is that going to happen with the arm of flesh? Is it going to happen with, is it going to happen with human ability? You're going to have to somehow let go of your discouragements and disappointments because you prayed for somebody and they didn't get healed or you were believing, you was believing God to get healed and nothing happened and now somehow you fossilize in some kind of a belief structure that eliminates the power of God from being manifested in your life and reality of it is, is that's the worst thing that can happen because then this gospel of the kingdom is not going to be preached and then there's not going to be a witness. And so, I, I mean, my goodness, Father's not going to let that happen because the end is ultimately going to come here, right? Uh, I mean, when I first went to China and, and, I was, uh, and I was there sent by the house leader, uh, some of the primary uh, house church leaders, and I got there, I would have been so heart sick if I would have got there and found a bunch of people that just want to sit around and read verses of Scripture all day and theorize about what God did when he did it and wish he could do it again. No, there was people full of faith. And that's why you got a more than a million people in China coming into the kingdom every single month. There's more than 170 million by government statistics that are right now in, in the house church of China. And that's growing, that's growing rapidly. Listen, I'm telling you right now, God is opening up nations. He's opening up nations that have been sealed off. And now somebody's got to be raised up to go into those nations that have been sealed off, just like Nepal. It was in prison to Hinduism as, 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 the, as, a, as the kingdom of Hinduism. Really, for almost 2,000 years, the gospel never took seed. In 1951, there was no known Christians in the nation of Nepal. Kashmir is just as bad. Bhutan to the... Bhutan's to the east, just as bad. Kashmir to the west, terrible. To just, just to the south, northern, the foothills of northern India, it goes on and on. Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan. Listen, the day is coming right now, it's, it's God is setting it up where we'll preach in Benghazi, Libya, who will preach in Damascus, Syria, who will preach in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, who will preach in Tehran, Iran. We will preach in the capital city of North Korea. But it isn't going to be just sitting around talking about um, um, memory verses of Scripture. It's going to be my mighty signs and wonders and miracles that, uh, that whole nations will be reached. You know, I love to tell the story about one little servant girl who God used to change a whole nation. One servant girl. She was from Cappadocia, and she was sold as a slave to the state of Georgia. And back in those days when a child was sick, they would take the child from house to house because they would see if anybody might have a cure or recognize the disease. And they came by this house, and this little servant girl saw the baby sick, and she laid her hands on the baby and prayed over the baby in the name of Jesus, and the baby was completely made whole. Now, look at this. She, all of a sudden, the queen, who had been sick and diseased for many years, received word of it, and they sent for one little slave girl who had no right to do anything with her life but clean the house for her mistress, suddenly was called to the highest place in the land because she was willing to do what Jesus said to do. She wasn't going to be willing to su be subjugated to her circumstance. She wasn't going to be willing to be dictated by, by the condition in which she found her life being oppressed as a slave. I'm talking to you. Because all of a sudden you're going to describe yourself on what you be. You're going to believe yourself to be those things that people have been telling you about you since you were in, in preschool and before. Now God's come and told you something entirely different about yourself. He said, you no longer live. I live in you. He said, listen, he says this. He said, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. He said this. He said, if you will abide in me. I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to this. John 15, 7. If you will abide in me. In other words, you'll take all your identity, all that you believe about yourself, all the concept of who you think you are, and it will be about me if you will abide in me. And my word will abide in you. In other words, all of your visions, your dream, your purpose of living, the way you think, the way you process, what you believe you can do, the source of it is his word. And whatever you ask, it will take place. That's pretty radical, isn't it? 
Jesus talking about this message in Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. Beginning verse 23, 24. He said to this, he said, it takes the smallest little bit amount of faith. But I want you to understand, Jesus personifies faith. You must understand, when Jesus introduced faith in, Mark, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, and it's the first time it's ever been introduced in all the Bible, in all of, of the history of man, he introduces faith to the concept of a centurion soldier, someone who's not even of the, of the household of Israel, excuse me. He says to them, he says, the, the Roman centurion says, he says to, to Jesus, I'm not worthy to come into your house. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy for you rather to come into my house. All you got to do is speak the word only and I know my servant will be healed. Jesus introduced faith. He said, this is faith. Pretty radical, huh? Hallelujah. Listen, there is a lot of the there is a lot of power of darkness set against this. There is a lot of religion set against this. Every hindering spirit set against this. Listen, Satan can't do anything about what Jesus did at Calvary's cross. But I want you to understand something. He is rebellious and he does not believe he's defeated. Jesus defeated him, but he doesn't believe one word of it. I mean, he is so rebellious and he's so defiant. And I look in religion and I see the face of that defiance. I look in people's life and I see those hindering spirits trying to stop them from just simply accepting what God has declared, believing this word of faith and moving in what Jesus Christ is. <laughs> <laughs> because he's come to live on the inside of us. We've come to live in him. His church is supposed to be the manifestation of him. Listen, I'm telling you what I live for. I live for a living function and walking in a glorious church. A glorious church is the very fullness of God. It expresses who Jesus Christ is, not another Jesus. And that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he tells us this description of, of this glorious church functioning and operating under the authority and the power of of the living God as they move and function in the realm called spiritual. He tells us in, in chapter 12, before that, he says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every person. There in the manifestation of the Spirit, there's the word of knowledge, there's the word of wisdom, there's the discerning of spirits, there's the working of miracles, there's the gifts of healing, there's the gift of faith, there's, the, there's prophecy, there's tongues, there's interpretation of tongues. Paul said in Romans chapter 15, 19, here's how he preached the gospel. Let's look at how he preached the gospel. Maybe it changed. He said, I have fully preached the gospel. Paul, you fully preached the gospel. How did you go? And fully preached the gospel. He said, by mighty signs and wonders right. and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right. So that Jesus might be made known. So that he, his, his, who he is and who his person is might be fully revealed. Come on, listen to me. There's a call here. And there's a lot of hindrances that you and I have to break through. There's a lot of opposition. There's a lot of people saying, you cannot do this. This cannot happen in your life. There's a lot of powers of darkness saying, it isn't going to work. You're going to have to put your trust in the doctrine. You're going to have to put your trust in something else. Because somehow or other, there, what God has said to us through Christ Jesus, what he's empowered us to do, has been invi invalidated by the lies of circumstance, by the lies of situation, by the voice of darkness. Listen to me. I, want, I, I, I don't want to let up. I don't want to let up here. Jesus said, look, look at the, look at the harvest. How is he dealing with the harvest? How is Jesus dealing with the harvest? Healing every sickness and every disease. That's how he's dealing with the harvest. Now, he was asked, I got every, everybody I hear, they tell me they're following Jesus and they're doing it right. Everybody. It's like everybody. Well, then, well, everybody can't be right. So let's look at what Jesus did and make up our mind that we're going to follow him so that we can have his results. Listen, if an 83-year-old man can go to the Philippines and start doing something, if one slave girl from Cappadocia can change a whole nation, because guess what? It's finishing the story. And you can find this. You can Google this one. She goes and she prays for the queen. The queen gets totally healed, and the king proclaims Georgia the first Christian nation in the second century A.D. Christian nation. Georgia needs the gospel right now. Georgia is in prison. Georgia needs the gospel. It's in prison to religion. Armenia was also a, a, became a Christian nation shortly thereafter. Armenia is in prison right now. It's hard, almost impossible to preach the gospel. I can't go into Armenia and do a mass evangelism crusade. You know why? Because the Orthodox Church of Armenia says I can't. They're going to put me in jail. 
They're going to throw me out of the country. They're going to avoid my visa. Next to it is Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a republic. No one's gone. No one's been brave enough to go and experiment. And it ain't going to happen because you know how, how to quote a memory verse of scripture. It's going to happen because you know how to move in signs, wonders, and miracles because you know how to move in Jesus because you believe Jesus is here. Jesus went everywhere with them confirming his word. He sent them out. He said, these signs shall follow them to believe. In my name, you'll cast out devils. You'll speak with new tongues. He said, you'll take up serpent. If you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They went everywhere preaching the gospel. Jesus working with them, confirming his word with miracles, signs following. That's what he said. He said, behold, I'm, he, said, he said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. He's just looking for somebody to believe him. I'm, I mean, we believe that he has all authority in heaven, but we don't believe he has all authority in earth. I mean, not really. Not when we bring it down to the state and the place that we're living in right now. He said, go therefore and preach the gospel to all nations. That's what he says. Baptize them. Make disciples out of all nations. It's radical. Isaiah 55, 5, the, the Lord said, the nations shall run to you and cleave to you when the glory of God is in your midst. Well, the Lord says there's going to have to be some changes there. Listen, what has to happen is you and I got to get desperate to participate with the glorious church and, and bail out on, on, our, on, our, on our own ideas and our own interests and our own will. We got to be willing to be conformed to what Jesus says to do. He's praying. He says, he says the disciples, says, ask the Lord of the harvest to raise up laborers. He says, ask the Lord of the harvest. See that? Can you see that right there, verse 37? I mean, hey, I messed up on the first scripture. Uh, Matthew 24, 14 didn't come to me as a word of knowledge, but I'm on a row now. Okay, here we go. Are you with me? Look at verse 38. Look at verse 38. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of harvest will raise up what? Will raise up what? Labors. Well, what kind of labors? The kind of labors that Jesus is. That, that his whole, the whole context is what is it that he was doing? We're intimidated by it. Huh? Dear people, listen to me. Just hang with me. Hang with me. Huh? Back in the day... When great revivals moved in, in, in America, it's because people came to meetings three times a day and they last 12 weeks, 14 weeks, 16 weeks, 18 weeks, 20 weeks, and on and on. Today, people are too busy, they're too tired, they're too weary, they're too absorbed with the things of this world to have time to sit in His presence, to have a miracle, to have an encounter. <laughs> and God wants to change that about your life. He wants to change that about your life. Listen to me now. Look at what Jesus did, did then in Matthew chapter 10. He just tells them, pray, ask the Lord of the harvest, raise up laborers, for the harvest is plenty, so laborers are few. What does he do? He appoints 12, and he gives them power against unclean spirits. <laughs> How do you see that? He gives them power over unclean spirits to cast them out. To heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You see, that's verse 1. There it is. You see that? Yeah. Well, the same thing is going to happen with the 70 others also. He's going to do exactly the same exact thing. He's going to give them power over unclean spirits to cast out devils so that, they can, so that the sickness and the disease can be cured. I know exactly what Peter preached. Look, at here's Peter. Are you with me? I know exactly what Peter preached. Here, Peter's coming to town. Here's how they did evangelism. They went banging on the door. Said, get your sick. Bring them out in the street. Peter, if he just passes by, just a shadow touches him, they're going to be healed. That's pretty radical. That's different. That sounds almost like a different gospel than one we know today, isn't it? Doesn't that sound different? Let me tell you what, right now. Here's what you need to do. You need to, you know, if you're looking for a church, and I'm talking to people right now on the web, you're looking for a church, here's what you need to do. You need to go around uh, and visit churches. Look around at the church and see if you want to look and act like those people. Because if you go to that church, you'll end up looking and acting like them. Now, if you decide, well, I don't want to look and act like these people, then go to the next church and find a church that looks like that their character's in the Bible. Or at least they're desperate to be living out a life that is described in the Bible and settle in right there. I'm telling you, there's a moving of the Spirit of God. The fire of God is falling on churches. It's falling on the people. People are going to get hungry and desperate for reality. Religion is not going to satisfy because as far as I'm concerned, there's no difference between Hinduism and the religion of Hinduism and Buddhism religion and Muslim religion and Jewish religion than the Christian religion. Because there's many people who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Listen. Paul said, he said this, he, he heard about all these guys with all these great ideas and all these great knowledge. First, first Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19. He said, I heard about you guys. I heard about what all you were saying. You all puffed up saying, you know something. <laughs> he said, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to see who you are. I'm not, I want to see your power. 
And he says in verse 20, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, he said, because the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. Jesus said, you receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. Now, I want you to listen to this. Listen, are you with me? Can you stay with me just a few more minutes? Can I, can I, can I, can I grab a hold of you for a few more minutes? John, listen to me. John sent disciples to Jesus saying, are you the Christ or do we look for another? In the self same hour, at the same time, the Lord Jesus did something. He, he did this. Everyone that was blind saw, the deaf heard, the crippled walked, those that were diseased were cured, the dead was raised to life again, and the poor had the gospel preached to them. He said, go show John these works which I do. That was just in one day. That was in one day. Listen, listen to me. Somebody said, somebody said well, I, I thought Jesus only raised two people from the dead. Look, if all the books that should be written were written, I, 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 as John said, I suppose the whole world could not contain them. Listen. This is one day in the life of Jesus. Matthew chapter 11, verse 3 and 4. You can check up on me. Seeing as I messed up on the first verse, who knows? I'm right now. Okay. Are you with me? Somebody said, why are you preaching? I'm breaking off the shackle. God sends forth the word. He chose through the foolishness of the preaching of the word to reveal his power in his glory. I, well, right now, with the word of God, hearts are changing. With the, it's the preaching of the gospel. As we preach the gospel, the authority of the Holy Ghost begins to work. Christ Jesus is here working with us, alongside of us. And you know what he's doing? He's confirming his word with miracles. And you know what takes place in that context? When you have been endued with power from on high, people are being delivered from the power of Satan and, and are, are now being handed over to the power of God. That's what's happening. The power of Satan that has put trouble in your body, that has put a seed of disease in your body. <laughs> Goes out. Now, Jesus said, Jesus said this. Listen to me. Don't you, don't, I don't want to hear another person tell me about how their great uncle Joe was the holiest person that they ever knew and he didn't, they ever knew and he didn't do signs and wonders. Your great uncle Joe, God bless him. He may have been as holy and as devout as anybody could be, but he's not changing one verse of scripture in the Bible and he didn't get one verse of scripture in the Bible. I'm going to go with the word of God. I'm not going to go with your experience or the experience of anybody else. I'm going to be conformed to the image of the son because that's what Paul said in Romans chapter 8 and verse 29 that God has predestinated us to do, to be conformed to the image of the son so that Jesus might be seen to be the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to do what Jesus did. Now listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. John chapter 14 Verse 12. This is Jesus talking. Are you ready? He says, if anyone. He didn't say, if 12 disciples, 70 others, if you belong to the first century church, and all the other nonsense, if anyone believes on me. That's what he said. These works which I do shall he do and greater works than these. That's what Jesus says. Listen, if anyone believes on me. Now, listen, I want to say this to you. I want to help you. That does not qualify as to whether or not you've been born again and saved. It doesn't. It, is, it doesn't qualify that, oh, if you're really a believer, then you're going to do his works and greater works. It doesn't. He, he just simply saying, if you believe on me, if you believe the works that I do, if you believe this authority that I will transfer to you, if you believe that I have all authority in heaven and earth, then these works which I do shall you do also in greater works. Hear, hear me. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'm pleading with you. United States of America, San Diego, California, I'm pleading with you. Listen to me. Those of you that gathered here in this place and watching on the web. I know what works Jesus did. Because I just read them to you in Matthew chapter 11, verse 3 and 4. That was a summary of just one day in the life of Jesus. The rest of the gospel, we see just various different events that speak very strong and loud messages and examples to us. I know that the works that Jesus did. He said, go tell John the works which you see. These are the works which he did. He said, these works should you do in greater works. Now, what if we lower the expectation? What if we don't press in? What if we just, uh, what if we just allow the hindrances? What if we allow the doubt and unbelief? What if we allow the immaturity 
of our lives to dictate to us what God will do with us rather than pressing in and giving ourselves completely over to the Holy Ghost to grow in the mature into the things of the Spirit. Paul gives you one of two choices in Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 13 and 14, he says, you're either going to come, into the, you're going to mature into the fullness of the measure, the maturity of the ministry of Jesus, or you're going to be a baby tossed all of your life being tricked by Satan constantly. Your choice, A or B. I'm going with A. What does it cost? <laughs> what does it cost? What does it cost? Come abide in me, Jesus said, let my word abide in you. He said, you, he says, he says listen. He says to the disciples, he tells the disciples, you cannot be my witnesses until you endued with power from on high. Go wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when, when, when they're endued with power from on high, the most religious city on the, on the planet, Jerusalem, 3,000 people get saved with these guys who are staggering around, staggering around under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, being filled with the Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. I want to say this to you as I get ready to make a transition. I want to just tell you that Hebrews chapter 11 is about the people of faith. It's about the people of faith. <laughs> it, it, when you make a transition over in Hebrews chapter 12, Paul says, seeing that you're, so you're, you're surrounded by so great a company of witnesses, you better grab a hold of it too, basically. Huh? He says, you're going to have to lay aside the weight and the sin that would try to hold you back and begin to run this race with joy. But let's look at, the, let's look at faith. Faith obtained promises. Faith worked miracles. Faith quenched the violence of fire. Stop. Quenched the violence of fire. Faith escaped the, escaped the edge of the sword. Faith stopped the mouth of lions. Faith, in, faith obtained inheritances. Faith worked miracles and signs and God has for you tonight, not only that wonderful, glorious gift of the Holy Spirit so that you can begin to function in the ways of heaven, so that your eyes could be open, you can understand what's going on in the realms of the throne room, what's going on in the, in the heart of the Father, what's going on in the divine authority of heaven, but so that you can see it and do it as well. Today, you can make it up your mind that you're going to not just be a hearer of the word only, but you're going to be a doer. That you're just going to say, look, Jesus, this is, I believe that you're here right now. I don't be, and I don't believe that you're another Jesus. I believe you're exactly the same Jesus that I read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I believe that you're the same Jesus <laughs> that Paul preached when he was in the school of Tyrannus. I mean, look, people, that's church. I mean, I don't, I, when I think about church, how do I define church? A meeting of Jesus did. When Jesus, whatever meeting Jesus did, that's church. Matthew 11, 3 through 4, that defines church. Matthew chapter 11, verses 3 through 4. In the self-same hour, he cured many of their sicknesses. The blind saw, right? The deaf heard. The lame walked. Crippled walked. Leprosy was cleansed. When, you, when you're dealing with leprosy, you're dealing with people that are maimed. Nose is off. Ears are off. We, I, was, I was ministering one night with Carlos Anaconda and Gustavo kept bringing me all the serious cases. I'm like, take him over to Carlos, man. I mean, why do I have to keep getting all the serious cases? He brings me a guy. He's, he, he wants to, he's deaf. But he doesn't even have any ears, man. I mean, come on. Let me just start with the deaf and just build faith here a little bit. He doesn't have any ears. And then not only does he not have any ears, he doesn't even have any holes in his head. The congenital disease. Well, what are you going to do now? I'm not backing down, man. I'm going to be valiant. I'm going to be valiant. Listen to me. I'm going to be valiant. Hallelujah. But will, will you be valiant? Will you lay your hands on the sick as according to the command of the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you believe what the Lord Jesus Christ told you to go and do these works? Will you hear what Jesus Christ said? Go cast out devils. Look at the school of Tyrannus. Here's Paul there at the school of Tyrannus. Look at what's going on. I mean, he's there for a space of two years, right? Three years. You can correct me. Huh? Huh? Which one is it? Two or three years? Pop quiz. I'm going to leave it alone. You need to know these things. These are important things to you. I'm talking, I'm ministering right now out of Acts chapter 19, beginning about verse 7, 6, 7. And look at what's going on there. Think about what's going on in the meeting. Because what is being reflected by the verse of Scripture 
is just a slight indication of what's going on in the meeting. Get ready. Get ready. Are you ready? Get ready. Gum my hands on your power. God's going to fall on you. I'm not, I'm not a theoretical preacher. I'm not going to talk to you about something Jesus did 2,000 years ago like he's a prisoner in heaven somewhere that he died and went to heaven. Jesus didn't die and go to heaven. He died and went to hell. He rose up from the grave with power and authority over death, hell, and the grave. And all power and authority is in his name. And he, preached, he told us to go preach in his name. Cure the sick. Open up the eyes of the blind. Hallelujah. If you don't believe that, nothing's going to happen. Satan's going to try to stop you. Think about this, dear people. Think about this with me. Hold up. Listen. Think about this. Hey, man, I know I'm competing with television commercials. It's got to be done in 15 seconds. That's the way you've been conditioned. Everybody knows if your television commercial lasts more than 15 seconds, you lose the attention span of most of 99% of America. That is, that is terrible. So we have to have a special miracle so that you can, can keep your attention. I can hold on to your attention. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that everything about the definition of what you want to do with the lives of your people will change, that the definition of everything about the church will be defined only by your ministry, Lord Jesus. We read in, in you're just going to go back to Acts chapter 19, so I don't have you following too many thoughts. They took handkerchiefs or aprons from Paul's body. And, who, and, and they took them to the places where people were laying on a sick bed or a death bed. Maybe it was another city. Maybe it was in an, even in another country. Because they've got a lot of countries real close together there. And they would lay those handkerchiefs or those aprons upon those who were sick. And the demons would depart out of their body and the diseases would be cured. So if that's what's happening with just what's going with a handkerchief or apron that was in the meeting, imagine what was happening in the meeting. Because see, Paul preached the gospel with the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. That's how he said to preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. Listen, I am contending for a glorious church that functions in the ministry of Jesus. The Holy Ghost has come here to reveal every dimension of the life of Jesus. I'm not going to slow up. And neither should you. Because you're believing another gospel. You're following another gospel. You're just going with religion. Huh? Just going with religion. Go with Jesus. I am going to say this because it keeps coming back to me. Jesus is casting out a devil. Man has a legions. The man of Gadara. In Luke, the Gadarean, in Matthew. And he tells the devil to go. And the devil says, I adjure you by the Most High God. Leave me alone. What do you reckon he's going to say to you and me? I mean, if he's going to be so stubborn and rebellious. Somebody believes that the devil is, is like really obedient. He's rebellious, and he's stubborn, and he's defiant. And there's only one power that can tell him what to do. And it's the power of the resurrected Jesus. I say devils go in the name of Jesus because Jesus said so. You have to listen to me. I don't get, listen, I don't get, I don't get, I don't get caught away with it. I don't get captivated by what Satan is doing. When you're praying for it, you know, several thousand people, you only have just a second to pray for them. I had people, Ann and I were praying for people a couple of weeks ago, and just barely, just barely touching them. You know, these, people, these people wallowing on the ground, kind of foaming at the mouth kind of thing, walking on all fours like an animal, clawing at themselves. Southern Nepal. Huh? Just walking by them. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. See, I don't have to worry about the results. The results belong to him. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I preach the word of God, and Jesus is going to come confirm his word with signs following. Jesus' name. 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 I don't have time to say, say anything much more. Huh? And they still wallowing. Some of them start wallowing. More. Ah, screaming, all kinds of crazy things. What a church service. What kind of church service is Jesus at? 
Huh? Satan oft come upon him every once in a while or often would come upon the child and throw the child into the water, throw the child in the fire. Jesus stands there, fire, the child falls down screaming, foaming at the mouth. Jesus said, devil, go. Huh? Huh? Listen, we watched as so many people were totally set free. I saw them the next day because they just leave them. I, mean, I can't sit there and stand there and watch somebody wallowing on the ground. There's a thousand more people to pray for. Jesus is going to do that. I'm going to do what he told me to do. Yeah. I told you this story. I'm going to tell you again because it just emphasized something that you must do. You need to get your heart towards heaven instead of on the circumstances that is in the earthly realm. Bottom line, people, many of us are Thomas. I think most of us are Thomas. Maybe all of us are Thomas. We don't believe anything until we see it first. Oh, but we want to be something more. Huh? Everybody believes they're a Joshua and Caleb. I doubt that you are because that's really risky faith. That's really risky. I mean, come on, I don't mean to insult you, but that's real risky faith. I mean, you're going to really step way up there to believe that you can subdue great and mighty nations and you were raised a slave. That you can subdue great and mighty nations without an organized army. What you're going to do, walk around going, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, that's how you're going to do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. That's how you're going to do it. God's given me this land and you have to go right now. All of the spies said, we like little grasshoppers in their eyes. The, the problem is way too big for us. The cities are fenced and fortified. They're impossible. That's your disease. That's your sickness. That's your hindrance. Those are the things that are besetting you. Those are the things that are standing in front of you telling you you can't do what Jesus told you to do or have those things that he's provided for you. Now, are you going to be Caleb and Joshua? I pray that you will. I pray that you're going to be valiant. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I was walking by this woman. She's completely mentally insane. Of course, we saw so many mentally insane healed, not only in Nepal, but in South Korea. So mentally insane healed in Japan. And this woman's totally mentally insane. She did. When the man, evidently when the guy married her, she was fine. Became possessed of the devil. Completely became mentally insane. She was not even conscious of her name, who she was, or where she was at. Totally insane. And so I'm just walking by. I probably prayed for, you know, clearly more than a thousand, probably, two, well, more than 2,000 people was getting towards the end of the day. So I'm walking by her. My dear wife is following me. Bless her heart. And, and it's good having her right there praying. But I mean, it gets pretty dirty in those areas. And that's why I said, bless her heart. Every sickness, you name them, every disease, you can think of it was there that day, those days. Every, every I mean, tuberculosis with very high titers, you name them. What, what disease? And leprosy was there that day. It's crazy to see leprosy. Leprosy is, leprosy is very viable in Nepal and in Asia. I mean, no nose, no ears, nubs for fingers. Huh? And so I felt it was just a glory of heaven when I, when, I, when I walked by this lady. So I just, because it's such a glory of heaven, I, I just reached out and I touched her, her cheek and I said, you're totally healed in Jesus' name. See, anytime you feel the presence of the Lord, you're receiving an impartation from heaven. You're being matured. You're being strengthened. So feel the presence of the Lord all the time. Hallelujah. Anytime you feel the power of God go into you, feel a touch, you feel a change. That's what happened with the woman with the issue of blood, right? She touched Jesus. She touched faith. And when she touched Jesus and she touched faith, what happened? She felt power come into her. Are you with me? I mean, I, I love quoting Matthew chapter 9, verse 28. Two blind men came to Jesus saying, heal us, Lord. Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? People, you need to hear Jesus telling, asking you the same question. Because I think that a lot of people might in that dialogue say, well, I'm not sure. The preacher said you weren't. My friend got prayed for and they didn't get healed. Jesus said, are you able to believe I'm able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. Immediately their eyes were open. Because Jesus is faith. What do you believe that Jesus could do for you right now? What do you believe that Jesus could do for you right now? The woman with the issue of blood said, all I got to do, I don't even need to touch him. All I don't even need to do is touch his garment. I don't even need to touch his garment. And I don't even need to touch a big part of his garment. Just touch the him. He was, she wasn't touching the zizit. She was touching the faith, Christ Jesus. What did she feel? She felt virtue. She felt power, literally power. 
come into her. He felt power go out. So I'm standing there, I feel the glory of God. I reached up, I touched the lady. I said, the Lord Jesus heals you. And I just was walking on. Her husband reached out and grabbed me because I just going to keep on going. Usually I just pull my hand away, my arm away, and just keep on going because people grabbing you all the time. I mean, imagine that. It, it, it gets pretty intense in those situations. And so, but I felt, I felt the Lord wanted me to go back and talk to him. So I, I came back. He said, you need to pray more. I said, really, I don't need to pray more. She's healed. He looks at me. He looks at her. He looks back at me. So he says, no, she isn't. I said, yeah, she is. She does goes to the drill again, looks at me, looks back at her, looks at me. I said, the, I said, listen, the problem is, is you're looking at the circumstance. You're looking in the realms of the earthly. You're seeing your greatest nightmare and your greatest fear. I'm not looking there. I'm up here looking in heaven. I see Jesus. I see Jesus with all power and authority. He's the healer. This is what he said he would do. Plus, I feel him. She's healed. She's totally healed. He, I knew today. He had to find out tomorrow. But you know what? Good thing he found out tomorrow because now tomorrow his faith is built up. Isn't that good? But even he faith built because they've just had a, they've had a lot of disappointment. This is a wonderful thing about ministry of Jesus. He goes ministering in the anointing and everybody's getting healed. So faith gets built. All right? Faith is being built up because, hey, he's the healer. Now, I'll say you go to these meetings and, and you're supposed to get healed. Nothing happens. So just, you know, all you did is fortify doubt. Are you listening to me? I don't know. We're not going to have doubt fortified in your life tonight. The Lord Jesus said, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Some of you will instantly feel the power of God come on you. How do you, a woman jump up this morning after I laid hands on people, just walk around and lay hands on people like I ain't going to do right now. And she jumped up and she said, my arm's totally healed. And she was kind of like in shock. My arm is really healed. This is amazing. My, it didn't work. It's working. Come on. Glory of God all over, the anointing all over. Beautiful. The presence of Jesus is beautiful. He really truly does have abundant life. It's not a concept or an idea. It's a reality. Just because so many people have not encountered the power of God doesn't change nothing, doesn't change the reality. God is not a liar. It, what he said has to be that way. It can't be any other way. That's my opinion. What's your opinion? Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm going to hands on you. The power of God's going to come on you. Whatever your problem you have. Whatever problem you have is going to be healed right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. The power of God comes on you right now in the name of Jesus. The power of God comes on you right now in the, name in the mighty name of Jesus. Be filled right now, overwhelmed by the presence. Now, in Jesus' name, the power of God comes on. Beside kind of the back and I'll sit down now. In Jesus' name, last to tell you, filled right now, right now in Jesus' name. Fire God comes on you right now in the name of Jesus. Very good. Power God right now. Receive the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you have need of. The fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Right now, filled in Jesus' name. Filled in Jesus' name. Right now. Receive right now in the name of the living God. Power God comes on you now in Jesus' name. Fire God comes on you right now in the name of Jesus. Overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, filled. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Phil, right now, do you, do you need something specifically? What's wrong? Um, I in the name of Jesus Christ, I send the word. I speak to his body, his physical body, right now, in the name of Jesus. I command that every part of his body work normally as God created it to work. Every power of darkness, every afflicting, tormenting work of Satan, every seed of trouble, right now I destroy it and it has to go from him. In Jesus' name, proclaim healing to him right now. In the name of Jesus, something wrong? What's happening with you? What do you need? You have nerve pain? Where at? In your spine. Well, in the name of Jesus Christ, that nerve pain goes. I commend that pain to go now in the name of Jesus. 
and be healed. Mm -hmm. Right now. Right now. Feel right now. Overwhelmed with the presence of God. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Fire God comes on you. Fire God comes on you. Fire God comes on you. Fire God comes on you right now. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Power God comes on you right now. Power God right now. Out of your belly flows. Power God comes on you. Fire God comes. Fire God comes on you right now. Out of your in the name of Jesus. Change right now. I said, change right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire God comes on you right now in the name of Jesus. Fire God right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. In the name of Jesus, the power of God takes hold of you right now. Fire of God. In the name of Jesus, wake of the Dios. In the name of Jesus, power of God comes on you right now. Fire of God, the Holy Ghost comes on you right now and changes everything about Hallelujah. your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wake of the Dios in Jesus' name. Power of God comes right now. Fire of God right now. Fire. The fire of God. Filled right now. Filled. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. The fire of God comes on you. Faith fills you. The authority of heaven. Right now in the name of Jesus, receive. <laughs> right now in the name of Jesus Christ, receive. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, receive. Fire of God comes on you right now. Fire of God right there. Fire of God right there. Sotra, Sekta, Bosta time. Fire of God right here. Feel right now. Feel right now in Jesus' name. Feel right now in Jesus' name. Feel right now. Feel right now. Receive. Receive. Right now. Fire of God comes on you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Manja Sota. Fire. Fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of God right now in the name of Jesus. Fire. The fire. Filled right now in the name of Jesus. Filled up. <laughs> Filled. 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 Filled up. Overwhelmed right now with the presence of the Lord. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the blast eye. Right now. Receive. Receive. <laughs> Received. Received. Faith and divine ability to go everywhere doing what Jesus did. <laughs> Faith and authority go everywhere right now in the name of Jesus to do what Jesus did. Fire God. Felt. 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 Built. Masate. Built. Masuprosai. Right now in the Nana Makataya. La Rastatara Nekataya. La Statara Ramasa. Pista Tari Lamakataya. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now, Malasate. Felt. Felt. Receive right now the same anointing that Christ Jesus has. Receive right now in the name of Jesus the same anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, that was given to the church on the day of Pentecost. Right now in the name of Jesus. Fire of God right there. Fire of God right there. Uh, the fire of God right there. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of His presence right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Changed right now. Changed right now. Fire God comes on you right now. Fire God right now. Fire God right now. In Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Filled. Filled. And I'm on the guest day. Overwhelmed with the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus right now. Receive right now. Receive the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 Sukurimama Nangara Sara. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now listen, I want, to know, I want to do this. Anybody who's had any kind of sickness or disease in your body, and I haven't prayed for you before tonight, I want you to stand up right now, and, 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 and we, want to, we want to minister to you in, in just an individual way. So I just want you to stand. You've got a disease in your body, pain in your body. Stand up right now. I want you to come here. Now, if I haven't prayed for you, just come. Just come. Come. 
Just come. I think I prayed for you. You're good. You're good. You're good. Oh, okay, so, so what's wrong with you? I have schizophrenia. Yeah, have schizophrenia. Look, Jesus Christ is going to heal you right now, schizophrenia. Uh, Would you like that? And then more voices? No. Have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart? Yes, I have. You have? Mm -hmm. Okay, when did that happen? When did you say, Jesus, come into my heart? Uh, today. Today. Who led you? Ryan, did Ryan get you? That guy back there, Ryan? Yeah. Ryan, come up here and stand. What's your name? Edward. Stand by Edward. So the Lord Jesus Christ, Edward, when you called upon his name, he gave you a new heart and he gave you a new spirit. Yeah. And this trouble that has been in your body and has been in your mind has to go out. That is a seed that Satan put there. And that disease only works by that uh, power of, of, the, uh, uh, of darkness. And now it's got to go out of your body so that you hear no more voices in Jesus' name. You see no more things that are not real in Jesus' name. Satan torments you no more, he harasses you no more in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You still got pain in your body? Still pain in okay. Well, the pain has to go. Pain has to leave your body. So you had a surgery in your back, on your back, and you have pain because of the way they cut the nerves or whatever? Nerve damage. Nerve damage? Okay. So you believe that Jesus is able to do this then? Yes. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, he's doing it right now then. He's happening. <laughs> pain has to obey me in Jesus' name. Pain has to obey me because Jesus said so. This is my inheritance. This is your inheritance too. That we get this supply of every good thing that comes down from above. Pain goes from your body now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your foul spirit of pain, you go. In the name of Jesus. Your foul spirit of pain, you go. Right now, in Jesus' name. You have to leave this woman alone who's been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, you just begin to see Jesus. Just begin to praise him, begin to worship him. This pain is history now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more. It's done. It's done. Is all of it out of your body yet? Oh, you have a machine on. Oh, you're getting shot with morphine or something? No. Just stimulating you? Well, turn it on. Look at me. No more pain in Jesus' name. It's history. So why did you have to have back surgery in the first place? Spine collapsed. How did your spine collapse? You have... Turned 50. You turned 50? <laughs> you have osteoporosis? I just had a history of a lot of spine issues. Well, I want you to lift your hands towards heaven because the Holy Ghost wants to touch you right now in a wonderful way. I'm going to feel you. Felt. In Jesus' name. Felt. In Jesus' name. With the presence of Jesus. Filled right now in the name of Jesus. These wonderful realms of glory. Father, I thank you that you take this life and you use her to glorify the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus. That not only she has complete healing, 
in the places where she's had deterioration in the spine that would be restored and reconstructed by the miracle of faith. But as she lays hands on others, hallelujah, they also get the miracle of faith. And she discovers that there's all authority over all pain and sickness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For this work of grace. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Lift your hands towards heaven. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. <laughs> Receive right now. <laughs> Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Everybody just stand with us right now. Just keep, just lift your hands towards heaven. Just worship him. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> right now in the name of Jesus. All that you have need of. Everything that you have need of right now supplied to you in Jesus' name. Faith comes right now in Jesus' name. Faith comes right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed right now in Jesus' name. Blessed right now in Jesus' name. Strengthened by the Spirit right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive right now. Receive right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this glorious work right now. Father, I thank you for this work of faith and power right now. Father, we thank you for this work of your divine grace right now upon every person in this place. Father, I thank you that every sickness, every disease, every power of pain is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for a change right now. Every work of darkness has no more place in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the glory of your Holy Ghost upon our lives. For the glory and the manifestation of your spirit right here. 
right now in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Filled up. Filled. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spirits of songs. Filled, speaking to yourself in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed is the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Work of faith. This work of faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whatever you have need of, the Lord Jesus Christ would supply it to you right now. Whatever you have need of, Christ Jesus is here to supply it. There's an increase in the manifest presence of God for you right now. There's an increase in faith in your life right now. It's right here. Jesus is here. There's an increase 
in everything that God has for you. It's right here, right now. Supplied to you. Hallelujah. Just receive. Just receive. Receive right now. Receive. 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 <laughs> Receive. 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 Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive. <laughs> Receive. Right now. Receive. Right now. Receive right now. Everything that Father has is yours. Receive. Everything that Father has is yours. It's yours right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Everything that Father has is yours. Hey, everything that Father has is yours. Receive right now. <laughs> everything that Father has is yours. The fire of the Lord. The water of the Holy Ghost. Receive right now. Receive. Hallelujah. <laughs> Receive right now. Just lift your hands towards heaven. And receive right now. <laughs> Just a little bit of faith obtains promises. Works righteousness. Just a little bit of faith. Nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. Just a little bit of faith. Hallelujah. Just a little bit of faith. Right now. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. I want to pray for everybody who has heart trouble. You have heart trouble. And it's not just, I'm not really talking about physical heart trouble. I pray for you if you have some kind of cardiovascular disease, but I'm really talking about spiritual heart trouble. You carry a hurt and a burden on the inside of you. It's just always there. What's ever in your heart's con constantly aggravating your mind. You know what I'm saying? Or it's blessing your mind. People get trouble in the heart. God gives them a new heart and they end up getting trouble in the heart because they take a hold of offense or they have some devastating situation, some crisis in their life. A death or a divorce. The loss of a job. I mean, there's lots of crises that happen in people's lives. It destroys them. Broken relationship. Feel like God doesn't love you, doesn't care that no one cares. Those kinds of things. Trouble. It's a seed of trouble that God wants to destroy right now. Wants to cause your heart to be filled with joy and love. And no more pain in the heart. 
If you got pain in your heart, I want you to come stand here right now because I'm telling you, Jesus will heal your pain. It take the pain of the heart away, the trouble of the heart away. That's right. Just, just worship him because he's here for you. He's taking the trouble of the heart away right now. He's taking the trouble of the heart away right now. He's taking the trouble of the heart away right now. That's Jesus taking the trouble of the heart away. That's Jesus taking the trouble of the heart away. That's Jesus taking the trouble of the heart away. Jesus name you tormenting harassing thing you leave her alone Jesus takes the treble of the heart away in Jesus name out right now in Jesus name out in Jesus name out right now it leaves you out! This trouble goes from you. Out of you now. Out! Right now. Out. Out! I said, out! In Jesus' name. Out! Right now, in Jesus' name. The trouble goes. You foul spirit of trouble and pain. Out right now. Out. No more pain of the heart. No more pain of the heart right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed of your torment right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. In the name of the living God, this torment, this harassing power of darkness has to leave you alone in Jesus' name. In the name of the living God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Most High God. Somebody say, what are you doing? Sometimes when I see a mountain, I just keep shouting at it. Until it's removed. I am. I don't know. You've already given me permission. You came stood up here. Now, faith comes. Faith comes to you. Faith right now, Ricky. Everything changes now. Everything changes now. In Jesus' name, you be loved right now. You be loved right now. You be accepted in the beloved right now. In the name of Jesus, no more crawling back to the things of this world. No more pain. No more hurt. No more suffering, Ricky. I set you free now in the name of Jesus Christ. There's the anointing. In Jesus' name. Out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a cat we and I'm not sticking it. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Trouble cannot rule you. In Jesus' name. That's what the Holy Ghost is supposed to do. It's supposed to rule you. The fruit of Him ruling you is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. That's what happens now. There's still someone else. You know how I know? The Lord shows me specifically. I, I can feel it. I sense it. I know it. There's still someone else. The Lord wants to deliver you from that heart trouble. Harasses and torments your mind. When your mind's harassed and tormented by heart trouble, you live in a prison 
that will not allow you to move forward with God. A prison of circumstance, a prison of the past, a prison of defeat, a prison of failure, a prison of inability. In Jesus' name. Come here. You know, I saw you last week. I wanted to pray for you last week. You left too early. Everything changes about your life, dear. Your whole life changes tonight. In Jesus' name. Every hold of Satan, every claim of darkness upon your life tonight is broken. I put the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. And everything about your life becomes new. The power of the Holy Spirit comes and changes your heart and your spirit. And fills you up with every good thing. I saw you last weekend. The Spirit of the Lord was telling me how much He loves you. I went home talking to you. Talking about you to my wife. I said, the Lord so wants to touch that, that lady that came in. He loved her so much. He's going to change her. He just do, he's doing it right now. Everything of the past is broken. Every claim of the past is broken. Every hold and tie of the past is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, you must listen to me in Jesus' name because Jesus said so. You'll never torment this woman, this daughter of the Lord, another day ever again. From this day forward, joy in the Holy Ghost. From this day forward, life and peace for you. Never again will you be abused. Never again will you be used. Never again will Satan be able to claim you and take hold of your will. Never again. Go free. Go free. Go free. Pure and clean from this day forward. Pure and clean, pure and clean from this day forward. Father, we thank you for a new heart and a new spirit. Ha! We thank you, oh God, that you put a, your spirit on the inside of this new creation that you've made. We thank you, Father God, that from this day forward, she lives in the glory, being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive. Right out of your belly flows rivers of the living water. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive right now. Receive. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more trouble. No more trouble. No more pain or fear. No more trouble. This is the work of Jesus, not the work of men. And no struggle. No hope so. It is the work of Jesus. It is his ministry that he's assigned. It's what he's commissioned us to do. All we have to do is be faithful, be bold, be valiant to do it. I love the story when Vincent Idahosa and T.L. Osborne, two of the greatest men of the 20th century, stood on a platform together. And they said, Today... We're here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did 2,000 years ago, he's going to do today. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the crippled will walk, the dead be raised to life again. That night, not one person got healed. 
Second night, these men came out. We're here to tell you that Jesus Christ was saying yesterday, today, forever. Tonight, Jesus Christ is here in this place. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the crippled will walk, the dead will be raised to life again. I want to sing a miracle. I want to sing a miracle. Third night, fourth night, fifth night, sixth night, seventh night, eighth night, ninth night, tenth night, these valiant men said, we're here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. He is here right now in our midst. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the crippled will walk, and the dead will be raised to life again. Nothing. Not any miracle, not a headache, nothing, nothing. On the 11th night, these valiant men in God, these men of faith who will not be denied, said, we're here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is here. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the crippled will walk. The dead be raised to life again. That night. The greatest miracles in the history of both of those men took place. Everybody was healed because somebody was valiant. And did not back down. People don't understand our terror. They don't understand our boldness. It scares them. They call it something else. But it will obtain promises and work righteousness and stop the mouths of lion and quench the violence of the sword. And it will subdue nations. Hallelujah. Healing's taking place in your body right now, too. Healing's taking place right now. Change. Every, God's taking care of everything right now. Healing's taking place in your body. Just don't move. Just stay right there. You down on the floor. My goodness, don't move. God knocks you down. Stay down. You know, the greatest power that we struggle against when we pray for people is that people feel like some people feel like it and believe that it's the will of God for them to be sick. <laughs> you ever heard that? Yes. That's one of the hardest things we have to deal with. Well, I figure if the will of God for you to be sick, if that were true, then you, you're in open rebellion defiance to go to the doctor. <laughs> well, I got some good news for you tonight. <laughs> that ain't, it's not true. I've been living in divine health now for many years. Hallelujah. <laughs> About 16, 17 years ago, I decided I didn't want to have anything else to do with sickness. <laughs> I was done with sickness. Hallelujah. And that isn't to say that my body hasn't been attacked with different things and it come on me. As soon as it comes on me, it gets off of me. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, you spend more time in the presence of the Lord. Spend more time in the presence of the Lord. Don't get up. Just spend more time in the presence. Spend more time in the presence. Spend more time in the presence. Spend more time in the presence of the Lord. Same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead also make the lodging more body. Just spend more time with him. Think about what he's thinking. Do what he's doing. Feel the goodness. Feel the love. Feel his presence. You can literally put on Christ Jesus like you put on a coat. Be clothed with. You can feel the overwhelming influence of his divine glory. That's the life to live. When I found that realm, Bethany, when I found that realm, I did not let up. I did not let up. When I was overwhelmed with the presence of God, I said, Lord, I want this every day. At the first, I didn't have it every day. I was back and forth with the, with the storms of emotions and earthly influence. And then I'd run back to the Lord. But I found a place to live in the glory divine. Yes. I found a place to have joy all the time. I found a walk with the Holy Ghost for the things that he's doing. I can do them too. I just simply wake up in the morning and I acknowledge that God is mine. And I am his. And I ask him, come overwhelm me and fill me. Oh, for the spirit of the Lord is in me. And lo, his word is in my tongue. <laughs> what a place. And beautiful thing of it is, people, we get to grow and mature all the time. It isn't just about pres preservation. The Lord preserving you into that day. It's about maturation. 
I've set my heart to the next 10 years coming in the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus. If you don't set goals, you're not going to achieve them. Look, I, look I'm going to tell you right now, they're achievable. Amen. I've set my heart. Come on now, set your heart with me. Yeah. Yeah. I've set my heart to be a part of a glorious church that looks just like the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. Just like a day in the ministry. No. Oh, do the oh, do the hindrances come out? Oh, do the powers of darkness rage? Do they try to make war? Oh, absolutely. But no worries. I'm strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. So none of those tricks can stop us. Hallelujah. Praise God. I command this hurt to go out of you now. Out in Jesus' name. Out, out, out. It is hard to submit to the Holy Ghost when pain is dominating you. God doesn't want that, so I can say in Jesus' name, Jesus said so. This thing's not going to mess with you no more. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you weren't here this morning, I want to encourage you. We have a live video. We have a video up right now of this morning's service. I want to encourage you to listen to it. Because it's on God granting to us repentance unto life. God gave to us the ability through the gift of salvation now to turn from walking according to the course of this world to now get to be taught of God the Holy Ghost every day. Amen. And it's a place of, their, of being no, having no condemnation. Amen. It's a wonderful realm. It's a place of abundant life. It's a place of glory divine. It's a place of joy unspeakable. Find it, you'll never want anything else. Drink this and you won't be thirsty for the world ever again. This is what the world is wanting to see. And we've got an abundant supply. If we'll listen to the Holy Spirit, these things of God will flow out of us. It was such abundance of provision, it will be like rivers of living water. This, this city will be changed. This city will be changed. You know what? I've been standing around here for a number of years, God building me up in the faith to see this city changed. You know what? This city is going to be changed. You know why? Because I've been, I've been in a big prayer meeting. I've been in a prayer meeting. I've been, I've been in a prayer meeting this last now for quite a few years. About 28 years. <laughs> Ann and I left for 30 days. We haven't been away from the church for 30 days since 1985. I was so blessed to come back and see it just strong and vibrant and hungry and thirsty. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, the Holy Ghost, is going to use you in a mighty way as long as you determine that it's not going to be any other way. Amen. Amen. Everyone you lay hands on will eventually be healed because you're going to every time move with the faith that they're going that everybody you pray for is healed yeah because you're not going to be backing down you're going to be valiant yes you're going to be valiant men you're going to be honorable men you're going to be noble men that will not change the word of god they will not alter it they will have no other expectation other than those things which jesus said because your trust is in him you see jesus right here right now you do not see some power of earthly ability that you have attained to by your own works of righteousness but you see jesus he's here he's here christina come here He's here. Christina, he's here. Lift your hands towards heaven. In the name of Jesus, I want to be a helper of your faith here tonight. In Jesus' name, be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What's up, Nikki? Thank you for the restoration, the restoratory system. What's, 
the Lord's healing um, those that have had problems in their respiratory system where you've had congestion and your breathing has been. Stagnant. Okay, you hear that? You had problems and you you've had problems with congestion, you've had problems with respiratory diseases. Breathe in and out right now the Lord's healing you. You heal as many as as many as how, someone said how many are being healed? As many as would believe. <laughs> Breathe in and out. <sighs> Where did you get that breath from anyway? It comes right out of heaven. You know, you get a little bit overwhelmed with joy and you find a place to stay happy all the time. You know what I'm saying? Everybody needs to get hooked up with that. Imagine one fruit of the spirit that you could live in for the rest of your life. How about goodness? How about goodness? How about goodness? Love, joy, peace, patience. Huh? Long suffering or patience. Gentleness, meekness, goodness, yeah. gentleness, goodness. Yeah. Let's get it into Galatians chapter 5, 22 order. Goodness, living in the goodness. Hallelujah. He breathed on them, said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Chrissy, come up here. The power of God's all over you. Just as soon as I said that, I saw the wind of heaven flow right over top of you. Hallelujah. Chrissy? 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 Prophecy. Prophecy. Prophecy, revelation, knowledge, speaking by the Spirit. I heard it earlier and I just heard it again. <laughs> now be strengthened in the anointing right now. Increase in the anointing right now. Sulaka dynamaka day. Right in the satai. Oh, Holy Ghost woman. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord say, Is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> Well, that's a true word. She said she heard the Lord saying, is there anything too hard for me? I know that's a true word because that's what God said by the prophet Jeremiah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Nothing's too hard for me, Lord. Jeremiah, it's Jeremiah uh, 32, 17, right? Is there anything too hard for me? She said, if you have just a little bit of faith, nothing will be impossible for you. You shall say unto this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and whatsoever you say shall come to pass. If you believe that you have received those things which you have asked. When you stand there praying. When you stand there praying. When you stand there praying. <laughs> if you believe that you have received that which you have said, spoken, she surely can to pass. But if you recognize, if you recognize, if you recognize that you have unforgiveness towards somebody, while well, you're praying, you'll have to take care of that. Because otherwise, your prayer won't be heard. The Lord says, anything too harsh for me? <laughs> God's going to fix your financial trouble right now in Jesus' name. God's going to fix your financial trouble right now. In fact, it's so fixed, you don't even have any financial trouble anymore. That's actually how you hook up with faith. You go, wow, it's fixed. Okay, I don't have any financial trouble anymore. I don't have to go consult my bank account to believe that. I don't have to go consult my bank account to believe that. Because the, the word of the Lord is good enough for me.
and you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And your soul is prospering sitting right here, right now. You're getting watered. So prosperity is happening to you. Soul prosperity comes when you're being touched by and overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord and you're certain that everything is going to be just fine because He is the perfecter of everything that concerns you, the provider of all that you have need of, the protector that keeps you and preserves you and yeah. matures you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mananga dasa tiya ta 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Me and my beloved. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. Dad, we love you so much. We love you so much. We love you so much. We love you. We love you so much. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask you to give Dad many souls in the last years of his life. So, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. That he'll, move, that he'll move in faith like he's never moved in faith before. Amen. That he'll move in signs and wonders and won't let up like never before. That he will not even regard his own body. Sometimes people like to preach a gospel uh, that, that corresponds to what they got. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. We preach not ourselves, but Jesus. Amen. Huh? Amen. I knew of a man who sat in a wheelchair praying for people during the 70s, and there was great signs and wonders. I knew of him. I did not know him, but I was told later on in the 90s of this guy. He sat in a wheelchair. had been in a t severe car accident, sat in a wheelchair. If he would come up, he'd pray for them. One after another, people would be healed of various different sicknesses and diseases because he wasn't preaching himself. He's preaching Jesus. Amen. See, it's not about you and me. It's about what we believe about Jesus. It's not about what, what we believe says. about ourselves. What the Word says. It's what, not what we believe about ourselves. Hallelujah. It's what we believe about Jesus. It's the Word of God. Hallelujah. No matter, I'm the healed of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen, you are. I'm the healed of the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we agree together today. You know, my dad was a very important part in the formation and establishment of the abiding place the church and um you know he's always been here always been a part in and out and so right now we're just going to believe together 
that two things. One, number one, we're going to believe that he's going to have many souls to his account. Because he's, he's purposed to live the rest of his life in the Philippines. So if he's living the rest of his life in the Philippines, might as well just go ahead and take the whole nation for Jesus. Huh? Might as well. Hey? Might as well get a shot of boldness and confidence and certainty. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You have to be careful those who you come into agreement with and those you come into alignment with because if, if you allow the wrong people to speak into your life, what's going to happen is they are going to be to you literally a hindrance from following and moving forward with Jesus. Because many people speak out of their own spirit, out of their own disappointment, out of their own discouragement, even out of their own belief. They've distilled a doctrine that sounds like the Word of God, but it really isn't. Actually, it's a, a concept of an ideology that suits their situation. And so if you agree with them and submit yourself to their Word, then ultimately what happens is you take up the same kind of life that they have. Amen. It's true. Very Don't true. take up the life that men have that have been disappointed and it's obvious to see that they've been swayed away from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get yourself around the company of those whose shadow is healing the sick and the disease. Get yourself in the company of those who believe for signs and wonders and great miracles, who believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Get yourself among those valiant men who believe these works and greater works are going to happen in the lives of any anyone who believes on Jesus. Get a hold of the truth of Matthew chapter 24, 14 that says this is what's got to happen. This is God Father's desire. This is the passion of his heart that this gospel of the kingdom be preached. The one of signs, wonders, and miracles and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Now I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I bless you to rise up in Jesus' name and run with the authority of the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I bless you right now in the name of Jesus Christ with a divine ability to lay hold on faith like never before to hear the revelation of heaven speaking to you right from the mouth of Jesus Christ for the Lord is speaking right now by His Son from heaven in these last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And He's saying, I don't know what you've been being thinking and I don't know what you've been told, but I have all authority in heaven and earth. So go cast out devils, lay hands on the sick and they shall re be cured. I don't know what you've been hearing and I don't know what you've been preaching, but Jesus said, I have all authority in heaven and earth. Tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy for nothing shall be able to hurt you by Amen. any means. Amen. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. Now great confidence on the way to heaven. Dad? Dad! Great confidence on the way to heaven now. <laughs> Ah, great confidence. Great confidence. Great confidence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My wife and I were away the other day. We were just worn out. Because when we go on the road, she doesn't sleep. Really. She's such a light sleeper. And I looked over at her, and she had a... She looked tired, and I had... Double baggy eyes. I had <laughs> two eyes that turned into suitcases underneath them. And I said, honey, I said, baby, we've got to run harder. We've got to do these things because we cannot afford to take the risk and at the last moment of our life to think that we could have done more. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you this. Right now in the city, there are tens of thousands of little kids in the barrios, in the downtown region, that can be easily harvested for Jesus. I've got a plan. 
God's given me a plan. I got a plan to reach them. I got a plan. God's given me a plan. It's a recent, fresh plan. Tens of thousands of kids. God's given me a plan to reach radically demon possessed party animal youth people. God's given me a plan. It's not compromising one minute. It's not compromising. I don't have to use any tactics in the world. I don't need no Christian rock band, nothing. I don't need no smoke and mirrors. I got something. I got something that Harry Potter would be knocked down in. <laughs> Not even new. And all the rest, the occult's rising. True. I'm, looking, I'm looking at the various indicators of how it's becoming so popular. They're, they're teaching a class in college right now, a Harry Potter class, on how to do, how to do, how to do sorcery and incantations. No, I'm not kidding you. At, at Cal State. The occult, the power of the occult is rising. You know, there's so many big stars out there that are leading the banner. I'm going to tell you right now, where sin abounds, grace is much more abound. Watch what God's going to do. Father's going to, Father's going to glorify the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and everybody's going to see. One day we were, Daniel was with me and, and Joshua was with me, and we were doing a crusade in Papua New Guinea, and the witch doctors came. <laughs> And they brought in the birds, and the birds were dive bombing the people, doing all their stuff. The anointing came, and bam! I didn't have to worry about it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care. I, just, I didn't worry about it. I just stood there in presence of the Lord. My hands lifted. Let well, Jesus do what He wants to do. It's His business. It's His kingdom. I'm just obeying Him. I'm going. I'm doing what He's commanded me to do. He's, you, tell, you tell me He's not going to do His part of the deal? I'm just standing there. Bam! They fell out under the power of God. They couldn't have did the works. Birds left. <laughs> and nothing to do with me other than I went and believed Jesus. Sit. I said to different friends of mine who have reached millions of people for Jesus and had great signs and wonders, I said, what's the most important thing I need to grab a hold of before I go? Calling up different ones because God's given me a great company of men around me. Praise God. I want, I want to follow the company of men that are, that are the great cloud of witnesses. I'm not interested in these people sitting in some closet church, have five people that they're preaching to hollering at theoretical information over and over again and acting like a Christian sage. Not interested. Come on. Are you listening to me? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the works. I want the Bible that works. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, said, they said this. Here's what everyone said. Just remember Jesus is there. Just remember Jesus is there. Just remember the God factor. God's there. Jesus is there. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is proclaim the word. Just proclaim the word. Just stand there and say, people say, T.O. T.O. just died last year. This year. People say, T.O. You must have great gifts. I, he said, I don't even know about any gifts. He said, I just stand there and declare the word of God. I just said it just like Jesus told me to say it. And, and, and it happened. The works happened. That's all you got to do. You know how Reinhard Bunke started? He started his ministry showing the black gold videos, the miracles, some that, were, some that have never been actually. We've got miracles that we're getting ready to put on, on uh, DVD from TL that have never been put on DVD. We're putting docu miracles right now on DVD. Reinhard Bunke would go and show the docu miracles of T.L. Osborne, where these little, these people with really little skinny legs, he didn't pray to hands on anybody. They just, while he was declaring the word, Jesus saying this, they think forever. He's here right now. He's going, if you're sick, you're going to be healed. If you blind, you see. If you're deaf, you hear. If you're crippled, walk. If you're dead, you'll be raised to life again. That's what he would do. Huh? That's what he did. And then all these people, all of a sudden, just all over the place being healed by Jesus, presence of Jesus. And so it was amazing documentary because because when somebody has this little teeny skinny leg and they're standing up there walking around, you know something's going on, huh? T well, Reinhard Bunke would show those and then he would make an altar call. That's how he did in the ministry. Show T.L. Osborne's documentary miracles. Everybody's standing there looking at him and then he'd go, everybody wants to save Jesus, come, huh? 
And then look what happened. You know what? Come on. You can go do that. What's stopping you? You got a creative idea of how to go preach the gospel? Look, I'm telling you, God wants to use you. He's going to use you. <laughs> Satan's not going to use you no more. Power's God is not going to use you anymore. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Change of everything. Change of everything. Huh? It's the gift of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is how you take nations. Tim Hall was standing on a platform about 30 years ago in a nation called Papua New Guinea. He was telling everybody that Jesus is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Blind see, deaf here, crippled walk, dead be rise to life again. They brought a little boy out of the mountains, been dead for three days. They laid him up there on the platform. The platform about six foot tall. Laid him up on the platform. The little boy hit the platform, got up and ran around. The nation was changed. The nation was saved. That's how Jesus takes nations. He says, go make, a, go make disciples out of nations. Come on now, man. There's only one way to make disciples out of nations. Come on. You got to believe Jesus. You got to believe that Jesus, that Jesus is here. <laughs> Everybody stand with me, please. Would you stand with me? Listen, we're going to, we're going to receive tonight tithes and offerings. We want you to worship the Lord. Listen, I want you to hear this. Listen to me. You need a miracle in your finances. You know why you need a miracle in your finances? Because God expects that you should take care of the orphans, the widows, the poor, the local church, and traveling ministry. Ooh. And he wants you to take care of them continually. That's a budget. And plus all the other stuff. So obviously the Lord then has a purpose of supplying miracle finances to us then, right? So you need miracle finances, and the church needs miracle finances for the transition that we're taking right now. That we're getting the building that we're getting ready to get, the property that we're getting ready to get. So I have a plan. Let's hook up for the miracle together. And the Lord gave us the answer in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He said that if you would give sparingly, you would reap sparingly. But if you give generously, you will reap generously, and God will cause all grace to abound unto you so that you will have all sufficiency in all things. And guess where the context was giving? In that context, it was giving to the church. So that's it. Church needs a miracle, right? You need a miracle, you give to the church, guess what? Church gets the provision that it needs. You step into miracle provision of faith so that the finances that God wants to supply to you begins to flow. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be giving an offering to Dad for the Philippines. And so if you want to participate with that, just mark on the check. You know, you can just put um, Papa. A lot of people call him that, so... Or you can put dad. Or you can put brother Spitzberg. That's a hard one. Or you can put Rev. Or preacher. Whatever. Are you ready for a miracle of faith? In the name of Jesus, I believe God in Jesus' name that a miracle of provision comes your way.